beautiful spoke. Um, I so wouldn't go with I decrepit, use, Eric. Yeah, I, I pick up this tool, I pick up the phone, and I make calls each and every day. This is all about relationship selling. I am not hard selling anybody. I'm simply trying to understand, is somebody open-minded? Do they have an open mind? Do they have an open heart to be in a position to fend better for themselves and their family, right? Um, I have a whole system in place. I use a flow chart. It's a 10-point process. There are two things you need to master here. One is called the open-minded call, where I ask about seven questions. Anybody could do this. The other is what's called a rating call when I ask three questions. Other than those two important phone calls, the system is completely automated. I allow the system to work for me to nurture and cement a relationship. So I've got a call coming up in about right now. Before I ever got on the phone with this person, she received a text informing her that I was gonna be calling her in 15 minutes and letting her know that I was excited to share the EXP brokerage platform and learn more about her real estate business. All of these templates are in CRM Grow. So before I speak to her this morning, I go into CRM Grow, I simply click a button and that text was sent out to her. I now received this text that she has watched the video and is waiting for my call. So I'm gonna call Amber Mosier, okay? So this call was scheduled for me by my 21 year old son who is here from Syracuse University working for me for the summer. And I think what we're proving is this is somebody who has got no sales background, right? He is as new as new could be to the industry. Um, and he's setting appointments for me. Set eight appointments, seven or eight appointments in six days, six, seven days, and identify three people that want to come on board, right? So it's simple. You don't have to be a rocket scientist or a brain surgeon. What I love about this program is the simplicity. And I'm not going to sit here and say, you know, you're going to become a millionaire by utilizing the system. What I'm saying to you is that anybody in your organization who takes the time to simply implement is going to have success doing this. So without further ado, let me give Amber a call. And then I'll take questions and we'll do a training with you guys so you're completely up and running. Amber Mosher. All right, here we go, Amber. Really, it's a conspiracy I know. today. I know. Right. Uh, Weed whackers. I hope you guys can hear this. I'm on the fifth floor and it's like overwhelming. I don't recall ever seeing this before. A lot of times I go up to the hotel and work. Hmm. So I'm going to personalize the call first. And I'm going to try to. Hi, this is Amber. Hey, Amber. Good morning. Eric Orland. Good morning. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. I was really looking forward to us connecting this morning. I appreciate you taking the time to speak with me. Hey, do me a favor, just so I get a feel for who you are, share with me your background. Where are you from originally? How long have you been in real estate? And what type of success are you experiencing? Um, so I started in real estate for eight years. And prior to that, I was in marketing for 20 years. Nice, Amber. What type of success, what level of success are you currently experiencing as a realtor? Um, so I'm, I'm generally closing about 30 transactions a year, around 5 million Excellent. volume. And um, the number of transactions isn't, it's, you know, I can handle a few more, but I don't want, I have a young family. Um, and so I don't really want to do too much more, although I would love higher, higher value transactions. So if I'm hearing you correctly, you'd like to take up your average price point, but you're pretty content with the amount of volume that you're currently doing. Is that accurate? Yeah, the number of transactions. Yeah. Gotcha. Who's your current brokerage partner? I'm with Remax. Oh, gotcha. I was with Remax as well when I was, uh, previously I was with Remax as well. What do you like best about being affiliated with Remax? How do they help you build your business? Well, I mean, every, all these specific brokerages have the great back end tools, you know, and I like those um, for Remax. And I like, I like the brand. I like the referral system that we have. Uh, I like my broker. Gotcha. Um, yeah, I guess that's just, I, I always like, I started with Remax. So I've always 
Yeah, I did as well. What would you do to change or modify your experience with Remax? In other words, if I can be so direct, what don't you like? Um, what don't I like? Mm -hmm. I don't, well, I wish that we had more agents in my, in my area. <laughs> uh -huh. um, you know, more signs would always be helpful. Uh -huh. really has a, a hold on our market here. Um, but other, I don't know. Other than that, I really, you know, I don't particularly like my local office as far as the aesthetics of it, but I really, I really am happy with everything. What would you do, Amber? What would it take? What would you look for? What would be a catalyst for you? to potentially move brokerage firms. In other words, if EXP, which is the fastest growing real estate company in the history of real estate, right? If EXP offered you the opportunity to keep more of your commissions, and if it may be aligned with the direction that you wanted to take your business long-term by offering you multiple streams of income, one of which happens to be passive, is this something that you'd find compelling? Would you be open-minded to making a change? Well, so I'm talking with you, right? So, <laughs> yeah. And I'm I, interested in learning about it. I don't know that I am ready to make a change. And, you know, I'm watching, I watched one of the videos that was sent as far as a crazy time lately with my kids. Right. Stuff, so I, I didn't get to the second one fully, but, um, but I watched one of them and, you know, did see the, the different streams of income and stuff. But, I mean, we're all in this to make money and help people. I mean, that's my main thing is helping people and making money. So and being flexible is fine. Exactly. Let me differentiate for you, because what I'd like to do is at the end of the day, I want to see if EXP aligns with the direction you want to take things. You may very well say, wow, this model is incredibly unique. I clearly understand why 81,000 agents have joined in the last seven years. Or you may say, you know what, this absolutely reaffirms that I am absolutely where I should be with Remax. Mm -hmm. So where it's different is, you know, EXP in seven years, 81,000 agents. We are cloud-based. Do you know what I mean by being cloud-based? Yep, I do. Right? So no brick and mortar, which allows for two very distinct benefits. The first benefit is the following. The highest level of coaching, training, and support the industry has ever seen. In EXP, 40 to 60 hours each and every week of live coaching and training, arming realtors with tools and systems to elevate their business, support over 500 full-time employees at your beck and call to ensure that you're transacting in the most efficient manner possible. And then technology, technology that helps you identify buyer and seller leads, as well as transacting in EXP world, which is absolutely transformed the way real estate agents now transact real estate, doing it so much easier, so much simpler, Amber. Mm -hmm. The second distinct benefit is what you said before. You said, Eric, you know, I'm on this call because we're all looking to make more money and keep more of what we're making. <clears throat> At EXP, put, they put agents in a position to keep more of their commission by having a cap in place of $16,000. You never pay EXP more than 16,000. When your cap is made, you are then in a position to keep 100% of your hard-earned commissions. Mm -hmm. Second benefit, is who typically makes money in real estate? Who really makes the big bucks? Come on, it's not us, the agents, it's the brokers. Right. At eXp, every agent has the unique opportunity to get paid like a broker without being a broker, meaning we have no liability. We don't have to lay out any capital, nor do we have to manage or supervise anybody. Yet, we have the ability to have ownership and build equity in the fastest growing real estate company of all time. When you hit simple milestones at eXp, we are a publicly traded company. Our stock has done exceedingly well. You are going to receive free stock. In other words, you, have, you will have equity or ownership in the brokerage firm that you are helping to build. Does right now, do you have any form of ownership or equity provided by Remax? You know, huge difference. What would that mean with young kids? What does that mean in terms of your financial security? I think that's pretty apparent. The second distinct benefit financially is everybody at eXp has the ability to introduce eXp to other agents. We are today the, known as the Amazon of real estate. We are a household name. And what the company has done brilliantly and generously, instead of dumping money into an office and paying for all of that monthly overhead, the company takes half of their revenues Revenues last quarter 
We were just announced our, you know, our, our earnings report last week, over a billion dollars. The company takes half of those revenues and give it back to the agents who are simply introducing this model to other agents. And where a broker gets paid out on one level, your broker gets paid, right? By taking a portion of the commission from the agents that work directly under the refer umbrella. EXP brilliantly and generously, when you introduce somebody to EXP, that person has the same opportunity as you to introduce others to EXP and earn a passive income stream. They, in essence, become a recruiting arm because EXP pays you out on seven levels. I have been with the company for two and a half years, exactly two and a half years. I have only sponsored 66 agents in two and a half years, yet I get paid not by the agents, by the company sharing revenues. I get paid by the company on 2,000 realtors, allowing myself to have a, create, a passive and residual income that won't pay me one or two, but millions of dollars a year for the rest of my life. I don't say this to brag. I say this because EXP has put every agent, Amber, like you and I, and agents on a global basis, in a position to have a sense of financial security and stability, the likes of which this industry has never, ever seen previously. Does this resonate with you? It's interesting, yeah, for sure. Awesome, awesome. What questions do you have for me? So, um, like, who are, who are, is there a traditional broker uh, in my area? Great question. So every state has a designated broker. Underneath that designated broker are managing brokers. So you don't just have one broker, you have a plethora of brokers that are there to provide you the support that you need. And what's great about this model, and I loved Remax, by the way, I was a top agent of Remax. What I love about this model is how many times do you drive to the office and think, golly, I hope my broker is there to answer any questions for me or pick up the phone. At eXp, you have instant access that's provided throughout the entire course of your business day. So your questions are answered immediately so you can be there uh, for your clients. Yeah, that, I mean, I, I pretty much get my broker when I need them. Um, so that's not a thing, but like where my bigger concern is as far as the brokerage is like managing all the documents and managing, you know, all the regulations. We're getting so many more regulations. Mm -hmm. It is. It is the broker. Um, the yeah. broker does manage that. Like I said, there are numerous. There's not just one broker. There is a, there's a designated, and then New York. New York actually has a great team of brokers that are there overseeing each and every transaction. How, are you familiar with Skyslope? No. Skyslope is pretty much considered the number one transaction management software system that's out there. You'll find transacting at EXP. It is as simple as A, B, and C. The broker tells you exactly what documents to upload. You do that, and your deals are off to the races. Mm -hmm. So, what, you mentioned employees. What do they do? Um, so, EXP um, has employees, and there's a concierge team. There's a broker team. EXP has 500 full-time employees that are in place to answer questions being posed by the agents. So the agents can transact as efficiently as possible. Mm -hmm. Is there anybody to help with like design services and marketing? We do. We actually, um, and I would love to take you through EXP World. Um, EXP World is our virtual workplace. Although we have more offices to use, funny enough, than any other brokerage firm. Are you familiar with Regis? No. Uh, Regis Corporate Suites. They're all over Syracuse. My son's a, a student at Syracuse University. And Regis is all over uh, the country. There are 3,000 offices that you're able to use as frequently as you'd like, that are made uh, as frequently as you'd like at absolutely no charge. Of course, you also have the opportunity to use your lending company, your, your, your title company's office, your lender's office. But where do most agents work out of today? They work out of the comfort of their home. So what's brilliant about this model, instead of dumping money into an office, which most agents don't use anymore, they're simply taking back all of those savings and giving it back to we the agents for the first time ever. That's what makes this, that's what makes this model or this platform so brilliant and beneficial to us agents on a global basis. Right. So uh, you would ask me about marketing. So when you go in EXP, when you go into EXP world, there are so many different departments. There is in fact a marketing department where you have access to 
thousands of templates. There is a technology department. If you have a problem, I was in there this morning, went right into the tech department. Someone jumped in my laptop and quickly remedied. You have your state brokers, your onboarding, accounting, legal, anything that you can imagine under the sun is in place to assist you in running a more efficient business. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, typically what we find is that, and you know, EXP, funny enough, in seven years, we have the number one, with the number one or number two top producing agent, 41 out of the 50 states. What we're finding today, Amber, and I'm sure you'd agree, I mean, we want businesses that are template driven. You know, do you want to have to recreate, put all that work into, I know, obviously, when you list a property, it needs to be pretty and unique, but we find with the quality of our marketing department that our agents are getting the highest level of marketing pieces. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And with the savings, can I ask you, if you don't mind, Amber, what type of split are you currently on with your, with Remax? 95. 95. Is there a cap in place? No. There's no cap in place. So if you did 5 million in production last year, you paid your broker a significant amount of money in excess yes. of 30, $40,000. Is that correct? Yeah. So with a $16,000 hard cap in place, do you realize by simply moving your license, you'd be saving yourself over $24,000. It's a lot. The other thing I want you to consider is, you know, I had talked previously about having ownership or equity at EXP. One of the ways you earn stock is if you become what's called an icon agent. I believe that you'd be very close to qualifying. An icon agent at EXP is an agent who's defined as doing either a half a million dollars in GCI, or they do 20 additional sides after they hit their cap. You're going to love this, Amber. In the event that happens, an agent earns ICON status. The $16,000 that you had paid to EXP, the company returns every penny of that to you back in the form of a stock grant, meaning that you pay EXP nothing, zero. Now, the beauty here is that you have to hold the stock for three years and allow it to vest. But if you look at how our stock has historically performed, not only are you getting your money back, you're not paying EXP anything, but your money is working for you, allowing you to build financial security. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's a really interesting thing too. <laughs> awesome. That is, yeah. Awesome. Fine, Let me ask you, and I'll go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, I was just, I was going to say, what makes people leave EXP? You know, I think like in any industry, there are overperformers and there are underperformers. I think that people who leave who leave the XP are constantly always on the chase looking for something better. I have been doing this for 30 years. You know, I have been a nationally recognized real estate coach and I've been active in real estate for 30 years. I can tell you I have never seen a better brokerage platform that is so agent centric. If I said nothing else in this phone call, what does it say to you that in seven years, 81,000 realtors have moved their license to EXP? If I said nothing, what does that indicate to you? Well, yeah, that they wanted a change and, and, and thought that there was something better here. Exactly. But you know, can I sit here and say we have no attrition? No, that would be a fallacy. Every real estate organization has attrition. And I think that's a byproduct of typically realtors pointing a finger and going, hey, the grass looks greener over there. And you and I both know that's typically not the case. The reason an agent is typically successful is because they apply the tools and systems that's provided for them. And that's where EXP really, really separates itself from the competition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. In our, in our market last year, there were 32 EXP agents. Mm -hmm. And it looks like, you know, I was just curious, like what, what people had done, but like when you get to that, it's got to be what around 2.3 million, I think I saw listed, and that sounds about right um, for the $16,000 cap, right? And only seven of those agents in our market would have hit that. So they would be on an 80 20 split, 
but you know, you are not an underperforming agent, Amber. You're an overperforming agent. You're doing 30 transactions. I think you start off our phone call by saying, Eric, I'm not really looking to take up my volume. I may not be, I may be looking to take up my price point. So I can't say for an agent who's not willing to utilize the tools and systems, you yeah. know, EXP, you know, they have it right there. I mean, KV Core helps agents get lead flow to ensure that they sell more real estate. But someone like yourself, I mean, you see there's a very concrete and distinct benefit. You are in fact gonna keep more of your commissions. You're gonna receive lead flow from KV Core if you wanna take up your volume. You're gonna receive an unparalleled level of support and then have multiple streams of income made available. You know, those agents that don't hit a cap, I mean, that speaks nothing more than the national average. Most realtors don't make $80,000 a year, which is when you hit your cap at EXP. That's a function of those agents underperforming, not a function of EXP's tools and systems or the platform in itself. Would you agree? Um, yes, I would have to, I guess. What, you mentioned KV Care, what is that? The lead? KV Core. So if you were to go online and look up KV Core, KV Core is today considered to be the best CRM in real estate. It's not cheap. It's about $600 a month. It's KV, like Karen Victor, Core, C-O-R-A. Now, what makes it the best CRM? Well, it solves a realtor's biggest problem. What is the biggest problem a realtor faces? Managing transactions. Or, or identifying buyer and seller leads. It's not yours. Again, you're a successful oh, okay. agent. But for the average agent, it's to identify buyer and seller leads. KV Core has a lead, a lead generating mechanism. And if you put in place a minimal, a minimal ad spend campaign, I'm gonna arbitrarily say the cost of a Starbucks, four to $5 a day, you'll generate north of hundred leads a month. If you're generating hundred leads a month, I was one of the founders of Movoto. If you're generating hundred leads a month and internet leads convert at three to 5%, as long as you're responsive and focused on nurturing a relationship, those are 24, to 48 extra transactions that are in your pipeline. Yeah. So, KV Core, so is there a referral? Like, um, you, you're summary next, you know, like we've got a great referral network. Is there that with ESP um, also? Sure. So, um, not only will you get leads from KV Core and you don't pay for these leads, these are your leads. They don't go to anybody else. EXP also has a relationship with a company called Prime Street. I actually brought Prime Street into the company. Um, they have a relationship with Prime Street. We have a relationship with Open Door. And I believe we're the only bulge bracket brokerage firm that has both a RELO and an REO department. Now, you and I both know, regardless of where we stand politically, right? COVID, people lost their job, right? And banks have not received mortgages on many, many properties. I think we could also agree that the market seems to be shifting a little bit, right? What we're starting to see is an influx, an influx of REO properties hitting the market. Within our group, I have one of the people at EXP that is directly in my group is Rick Wilson. I had the head of the REO department on my group call Wednesday last week. I could tell you that in Syracuse, I'd put you in touch with them, have you build a relationship and put you in a position to receive REO business. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't. You've answered a lot of my questions. I am. Um, Let me do this. You ever had a date? You ever had a date with somebody and they got out of the car and you thought to yourself, "Hi, huh, I wonder what they thought of me." I hate, hate putting myself in that position. I'm going to ask you the following question on a scale from one to ten. One, Eric, no interest. Not ten. Yeah, I can see joining. I'm ready to join. I know you're not ready to join right now, but where do you stand right now, Amber, on a scale from one to ten? Maybe four. I kind of, I've had my father passed away recently. And oh, I'm so sorry. It was my mother and little children. And we just bought a vacation rental property. And I just feel like I have a really a lot going on right now. And I really, I, I think about things and I look at numbers and I talk to people. I'm, I was went to school for journalism and I, I just do a lot of research. Did you go to, so, did you go to Syracuse? No, I did. I went to Brockport. I went to school. Oh yeah. yeah. I know. I'm from, I'm from the island originally. I've been okay. gone for 40 years, but I'm from you know, Long Island originally. Okay. And yeah, so I just, so, you know, that puts me in a core. This is very interesting. I mean, the, the cap on the 16,000, the, you know, passive income, if that wasn't anything I was looking for, but if it comes along with it, then that's great. <laughs> so, um, you know, even better, it makes it easier to, to like numbers. So, you know, I know there's a couple of agents here too who just recently 
switch there who are kind of powerhouses in our market. So mm -hmm. that's interesting to me too. Um, so I just, you know, after getting this information from you and, and stuff, I, I'm probably going to just research a little bit more and, um, well, you know, I'm not ready to make a quick decision right now just because of what's going on in my life. Yeah. And I don't want a quick decision. I'm about building a relationship yeah. with you. I don't believe you take somebody to the end of a cliff and give them a push. I believe when somebody, and when somebody jumps, I'm there to catch them. I want to build a relationship with you and I want you to get comfortable with EXP. Would you like to go on a tour of EXP world to see the simplicity and how EXP world functions? No obligation, no commitment. Again, my goal is to educate you. So when and if this opportunity resonates, you know, we have already built a relationship. Yeah, that, it, would, it could be interesting to see. That's where you just kind of like the back end, right? It is. And yeah. what I would like to do is between now and when and if you're ready is continue to build a relationship with you. Because uh, I think ultimately, I think that what I took away from this phone call is that you seem to you know, clearly um, ascertain that the platform financially is significantly more rewarding. Um, I'd love to continue to build a relationship. And again, when you're ready to make that move, I'd love to be in a position to, to assist you. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't, I mean, when you add in just commenting on what you just said about being significantly more rewarding, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not sure that my numbers are going to hit this year more than because in recent years, just because of everything that I have um, additional responsibilities. Can I ask you a question? And you're love, you've got a really nice way of that. I'm really, I'm enjoying this conversation, but if you genuinely feel this way, right. And I sold 128 homes my second year in real estate, right? I woke up my third year. I was terrified, man. I had to go back into the market and recreate what I had done the year before. I thought there's no way I'm going to be able to do that. What would it yeah. mean to you having a young family to have ownership in the brokerage that you're helping to build and also have the ability to have passive income in the event that you have an off year, the market's down, that that doesn't impact how you and your family live? What would that mean to you? Yeah, that is, that is really... Um... Right, because you've got kind of like the other agents who you may have brought in, right? Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, so tell me, like, you know, if, I don't know what the numbers are, but like, you know, I mean, you've got successful agents and you have non-successful agents. So um, how many people are bringing in other people, you know? So I, 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 I think, I think, I think the, if you looked at the data in real estate to see how many, you're an excellent agent. Let's call it for what it is. You're doing 5 million in sales. You're doing over 30 transactions a year. The same agents who are typically successful in selling real estate are also success, successful building their rep share. The agents who are not typically successful in selling real estate are probably less successful. I think there's a correlation between people that are successful and you know, having successful results and people who are not successful, obviously not having as successful results. So, you know, I was a top selling agent when I was active and today I've been fortunate to build a team of over 2000 realtors by the end of this year. I mean, I could retire by the end of this year. My organization today is growing by itself because the beauty again of this model is the company brilliantly and generously, instead of getting paid in one tier, like a broker, because a broker has so many expenses, the company is paying out in seven levels. My organization grew this month by over 200 agents. By 200 agents, I had nothing to do with that. Right. That's pretty incredible. Isn't that incredible? So, yeah, it is. Keller Williams has a, a, a program like that, don't they? You know, it's, it's, a, it's quite a bit different. So are you familiar with the term profit share? Yes. So profit share, right? Keller Williams shares their profit. But what happens if a branch isn't super profitable? There's not a whole lot of profit to share. And what happens if there are regional managers and sales managers and territorial managers? At Kelly Williams, there are so many people that are dipping into that profit share that there's not a whole lot left over to pay the agents. Watch the difference. At EXP, we did a billion dollars. It was announced last week. The company took half of those revenues, not profit. They took half of those revenues and brilliantly gave it back to the agents so we could experience the same wealth that a broker experiences. It's now an even playing field. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I'm, um, you piqued my interest. And you picked mine. <laughs> <laughs> Let's continue to build a rapport. I am going to send you out a text within the next few hours 
and I'm going to make an introduction to a dear friend of mine. His name is Jeff Seppo. And Jeff is going to take you a tour on a tour of EXP world. We're not going to push you or anything. I'm here to build a relationship and educate you to see if this feels right to you. Okay. Sound right? Sound I about right? That. You're welcome. Thank you. Hey, I'm sorry to hear about your dad. I am. I lost hey. both of my parents. I know that's something that's challenging. But um, thank you for being so kind with your time this morning and so being so open-minded. Thank you. Have a great rest of the day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. It was actually, she was good. That was amazing. Woo! Yeah, that was great. Wow, that was fire. Man, yeah. he was real in the middle. You can chill <laughs> saying fire. You know we got it. Woo! Oh, thank you. Wow, that was incredible. But you know, it's not a hard sell, guys. You know, my mindset is smile into the phone, be genuine with people. And this is going to resonate, you know, with Sheila being how spiritual she is, right? I try to connect with every person I call. I want to understand them. I want to be of service. I don't want to sell. I want to compare. Exactly. This is what EXP offers. This is what they're getting right now. And let them, you know, I'm not into a hard close. I'm not a slick oil salesperson. I'm seriously tr just trying to connect with people. And nobody is doing you a favor. Nobody is doing you a favor in joining EXP. You are giving somebody an opportunity to change the entire dynamic of how they fend for themselves and their families financially. Yeah. What questions do you guys have? I don't have no questions. I really like how you did it because you were so simple in layman's terms where people can understand it. And I think that's one of the big things we run into is a lot of people like me that, you know, you get in your 40s, 50s or older, you get you start getting into all this technology, they get scared where they kind of want to back off because they're not sure about it, like the younger. So I like it how you put it in layman's terms. It's like, for example, it's like reading the Bible. You can read some Bibles that are so wordy that you don't understand it but you get the ones that are so simple that it just resonates with you and you understand it so i really liked it how you did that and i liked how you confirmed all the information you would go back and say so what i'm understanding is you know x y and z and i think that to them is showing wow he really is listening to me so it is very genuine thanks i appreciate your appreciate your positive feedback but you know suffice it to say you know it's a numbers game Right. Yes. It is a numbers game. And if you pick up the phone, you could build a significant business in a short period of time. I don't know if it's going to be a million dollars. I don't know if it's going to be two million dollars. I can tell you that I've built a million dollar business on a cold call, on a cold call. Just like now, I recruited Orlando Montiel. He is the fastest growing person at EXP, without a doubt. So talk to us about that. How many calls are you making a day? Do you have any specific numbers you're getting daily, weekly, monthly, yearly? Talk to us a little bit. About I probably. <laughs> On a daily basis, if I'm not making 50 phone calls a day, I feel like I really not work at my job. I feel like I'm treating my job as a hobby. And that, then I'll beat the heck out of myself, right? And that's just not worth taking myself on that emotional roller coaster. So instead of laying in bed at night and questioning whether I'm being disingenuous to my profession, you know, to me, it's a lot easier to get up in the morning, pick up the phone and make the phone calls. So when I look in the mirror at night, I kind of like what I say. I feel like I was, I was authentic. I was genuine and I... I was, I, I maintain the fact that I'm really good at what I do. And that's really important to me. It's not the money. Yeah. It's the feeling of empowerment, and not feeling disempowered. It's and, a minimum of 50 calls a day. And in the coaching world, that's what we always told people. And that's what we were always told by our coaches is you have to make a minimum of 50 to a hundred calls a day in order to hit enough contacts, because it is a numbers game. Because if, you know, no different than internet leads, if you get a hundred internet leads a day, you may get 10 of them that are contacts and one of them will close. It's no different than phone calls. If you're not making, making actually enough phone calls, you're not going to get enough contacts and then you're not going to get enough potential appointments or closes. So it's, it's not that, and a lot of times as recruiters, we get in our own head and we, we literally are our worst, our own worst enemies because we're like, we make excuses for people without even calling them. Oh, well, they may not be interested in this or oh, they may be too big or oh, they may be whatever. I mean, if I had made excuses, I wouldn't have called Brent. You know, I, I wouldn't be sitting here today if I hadn't called Brent. He wouldn't be sitting here today if he hadn't called Orlando. So it's, it's one of those things where you just have to decide, I will make 50 calls a day. And I can tell you because that's what I did to build my business. I was a mega agent. I personally sold a hundred homes a year myself without my team. 
I made 50 calls a day. It took me two hours every day to make 50 calls. Um, and that's with conversations. And I called expired in FISBOS. That's how I built my business. And so <clears throat> if you think about from a recruiting call, um, your initial is just the call to make the contact to set up an actual phone call appointment. So it shouldn't take that long to do the initial call to set up the appointment to have a conversation or to set up the appointment. And once we get into his system to send the video or to send the file, you know, get them into the CRM system, CRM grow system that we're going to show you guys. But it's, it's just the, the discipline of your schedule and of your mind. And a coach told me one time, because depending on your personality types, I am a high I personality. So by nature, I tend to be a people pleaser. By nature, I hate conflict. <laughs> hate it, hate it, hate it. <laughs> and so I want to like run away and hide <laughs> when conflict happens. So one of the things my coach told me is he said, you got to think ready, aim, fire. He said, you're, you're really good at getting ready. <laughs> he said, you actually are really good at aiming too. He said, the firing's your problem. He said, so what I want you to do every day is sit down at your computer, put your headset on, and all I want you to think is fire, 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 fire. It doesn't matter if you get them on the phone. It doesn't matter if anybody answers. I just want you to get in the habit of doing the work. Phone call, phone call, phone call, phone call, phone call. And once I started doing that, and then, whoa, I got one. Wow, somebody actually picked up. <laughs> right. True, though. What, what do you think about, or what is your opinions on if you make a phone call, like you said, phone call, people don't answer? What is your opinion on turning around saying, okay, Jack Smith just didn't answer. Let me shoot him a video text real quick, just saying, hey, introducing myself. I just made a call. Or do you just leave him, chalk it up, and say, I'll call him back? He gets uh, so the whole system is automated for you whole system that we're going to show you. So if somebody doesn't show up in a call. Not show up, doesn't answer the initial call. They'll receive a text. Okay. It was text with a Calendly link. Okay. Right? I'm not going to go in a deep chase. I'm going to let the system work for me. So the whole system is automated, right? From the point that when we first have a conversation, right? We then send out an e we then send out a, the two videos. They receive an email. If they don't open that email within an hour, our thought process is that email went to spam. No, but he's saying before you ever contact the person, They're like the you're, you're just making a phone call to see if you can get them. They don't answer. They're one of ah, your 50 gotcha. calls. Gotcha. You never talk to them. There's no contact at all. Would you just put them on a follow-up list? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we were always told, don't leave a message yeah, because the key, this is the most important thing out of all of this. What he said was it's all about relationship. I cannot have a relationship with you if all you do is text me. Correct. I cannot have a relationship with you if you're emailing me. We do not have a relationship. I have a relationship with you when I have a conversation with you or a FaceTime with you or a video chat with you. That's when I have a relationship with you. So that's how you need to, you need to wrap your mind around you're looking for more relationships. And if you listen to his script, and I'm recording this so you guys can go back and listen, I love his language. He said constantly, I want to build a relationship with you. I want to continue our relationship. I want to develop our relationship. And he also constantly used language that was positive affirmations towards her. It was so kind of you to set this time aside for me. It was so kind of you. He used amazing language in the verbiage he used of how he described her and how he encouraged her and how he led her. Amazing language. You guys have any other questions? Fire away. This is your time. Hey, you guys. Uh, yeah, I have, I have a question regarding, uh, I guess, data. I could get with Charles or somebody about this. Where, where do you get your, your data? As far as your phone numbers are concerned, we have a raw data sheet that I have for my area. What I found was there's like 1500 agents on it um, and only like 500 and something phone numbers. So where, where are you getting your, your, your data? You know, right to realtor.com. So my son's in town from Syracuse University. He's jumping in realtor.com. He picked a zip code. He goes to school in Syracuse at Syracuse University. 
So he started calling agents in Syracuse, New York, okay. realtor.com. He's able to see how many home sales they made, who we want on our team. It has okay. all of their contact information right then and there. Gotcha. Yeah, realtor.com, Zillow, or your MLS. You literally. Realtor.com <laughs> does show their. Oh, volume. yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. Because uh, when you go into the back end of Realtor.com as a team, yeah. I would log every sale. You log every sale. You log all of your stats. Realtor.com and Zillow both do this. Hmm. I always had my assistant record everything because when I had clients get onto one of those systems, I wanted them to see my volume and I wanted them to see my testimonials. So I was able to load everything onto the back of both of those systems because it just shows you as an authority figure. Okay. And Eric, what are you doing for, for your initial phone call? Like before um, you got Amber on the phone here, what was that initial phone call like to get her set up in CRM growth and then follow up with her for your, your presentation? You just did? So the initial script, exactly. So I created a script for my son, right? Okay. He set the appointment for me and I'll email you the scripts. Okay. Yeah. So I'm curious to so what that. that what that initial call is like, you know, that's... he followed that script and what he realized quickly, he's only been doing the seven days, right? He's had really good success doing this, but you know, I didn't want him sounding robotic. So the exactly. goal, goal is right. to memorize the script. The goal is to internalize it and have it become part of your personality. It's really, gotcha. yeah. Someone senses BS, you know, people see BS coming a million miles or away. sleazy yep. or, yeah. or salesy or recruiting oh, people. Nobody likes that feeling. You just keep yeah. it cool with people, right? So, you know, yeah. he worked, you know, and he said, you know, first day or two, right? He was reading the script. People could tell. Some people are really just nice and new. That he, <laughs> he actually, yeah. had his, own, his own initiative, he actually said to a couple of people, I'm a student at Syracuse University, which I actually thought was brilliant. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. Brilliant. Because yeah. what he did is he, who's going to be mean to a college kid who just yeah. started calling for the first time? Yes. So yeah. that wasn't my idea. That was his. But now as the week's gone on, now what he does is he has internalized the script and has made it part of his personality. And okay. anybody can do this. And I want to share with you the script. You know, I make calls every Tuesday. Oh, today I have to do it. <laughs> From two to four today, I invite everybody that is on my first and second line. And they're allowed to bring five people. Wow. Five cold calls, people that they don't even know, but they know of them, right? or personal contact and I call for two hours. I don't put down the phone and I stack underneath those people. My goal is to spread the wealth. Nobody likes feeling like, oh, this person's making all the money, has all the toys living on the top of the hill. My goal is for everybody in my organization to be successful. Awesome. And that may mean a thousand, two thousand, three thousand, five thousand. But you ready? A call last Tuesday. Yeah, a week ago today. Biggest agent in Miami. Wow. Has a team of 50 people, another Orlando, coming into the organization. It's meeting with um, Jeff, what's Jeff's name out of Arizona? White Jeff Williams. Jeff Williams. Jeff Williams. Meeting with Jeff Small. Wow. Jeff's in Miami. It was a cold call. It was a call, and it was a hard no. She said to me, no, not interested. I agree. What aspect of the EXP model are you not interested in, right? Objection handling. He goes, I'm just really happy where I'm at. I said, I understand. If you're happy, it's probably a good indication that you've had your head down and you're really focused and not aware of what else is out there. He said, absolutely. I said, if I can introduce you to a platform that allows you to keep more of your commissions and put you in a position that may be aligned with the direction you want to take your real estate business by offering you multiple streams of income, one of which happens to be passive and would change your life. Would you be open-minded? Our phone call, our phone call yesterday. And I would bet you he's going to come in within the next two weeks. He's got a high, high. Give us your opening statement when you make that call they answer today i'm gonna make it uh, 50 times today mm -hmm. I'll, I'll get on the horn and i'll say um hi my name is eric orland um i hope you'll take this how are you today good hey i hope you'll take this call as a compliment right i hope you'll take this call as a compliment That's good. Like it. right you obviously have a great reputation in your market as both a real estate and a human being my name is eric orland i'm with exp would you be open to learning more about the platform if, and I go, in, if I can show you, will you? If I can, will you? Okay. It's always that, if I can, will you? Okay. Right? Compliment people, mm -hmm. open them up. I say, I hope you'll take this phone call as a compliment. That was awesome. And this guy, you know, he's texted me five times this morning. 
biggest agent in Miami as oh. a team of 50. But you never know when you're going to connect with a whale. And don't let anybody's the size of their production intimidate you. Remember, we're all human beings. We all sit in a toilet bowl the exact same yep. way. <laughs> Sorry, Sheila. No, nope, I, I get it. Who else is on it, right? <laughs> Like that, that's awesome. you know, well, I've heard people say we all put our pants on the same way. Right. <laughs> we all, Probably could have put it like that. We right? all, uh, we all... <laughs> but you know, nobody is bigger than the XP to me. Nobody, nobody. I don't care how successful a realtor is. The reality is, we have agents in our organization Gene, Brent, Rob Flick, Sheila, making oodles and oodles of money. And, um, making oodles and oodles of money. Nobody's bigger than EXP. And let me tell you, there's not one agent in the country that would like to have a residual income stream of 500,000 a month, a million dollars a month, which people are now making at EXP. Look, right, so I went through your course, I want you to, so two years of calls, 50 calls a day, if you don't mind sharing, what are you making money-wise? I'm making, I'm not on, so I should be like, I should be knocking on the door of 40 this month. I made 45,000. Wow. So guys, I want y'all to hear that. Would you make 50 calls a day for two years to make $40,000 a month the rest of your life? And then also, you know, I went through your class and you said 28,500. And I texted you. I wanted to know the significance of that number. It was a very unique number. So maybe share that. With All you. right. So <laughs> I had a pretty you know, interesting background. So you know, my, I come from a family of overachievers. My younger brother is a vascular surgeon. And my sister is a Yale doctor married to a Yale doctor. My aunt's family started Universal Studios. And what? yeah, yeah, my aunt's family. Wow. So, Jeez. My, you know, everybody, my, my uncle brought arthroscopic surgery to the United States. And I was at 58 years old. That was two and a half years ago. And I went up going broke, completely broke. I had an interesting model. I'm the only real estate coach that I know that was endorsed by every major co title company in the country. My model was always the more you give in life, the more you receive. I'm more about giving than I am receiving. And I coached realtors basically in California, Colorado, Arizona, and the state of Florida. And I coached them for free. And my message to them was, I don't want your money. I want a relationship. That if I help you build your real estate business, I want you to give my mortgage company. I owned the P&L at nine different offices. And as life would have it, I went to work for a bank with a CEO who I just did not jive with. And I could be really direct, really direct. And he called me up one day. He said, Eric, you hate working here. I said, I loathe you. I said, I know that's a terrible thing to say. I said, but I cannot stand your voice. Everything that you stand about, about taking from people goes against who I am. And he said to me, I'm going to terminate you. And I said, remember, I brought 80 people with me. You have a non-compete. And he said, you're going to be so poor in a month. You're not going to be able to afford a lawyer. I had nine offices and I was on the lease for nine offices. I went bankrupt. I was dating my girlfriend for a week then. We were on our second date. And I said to her, I know this may seem a, seem a little strange. Can I borrow $5,000 from you? I swear to you, we laugh about it to this day. Honest to God truth. <clears throat> Thank God she was super cool. And she's made it, you know, it's worked out well for both of us. But suffice it to say that um, I was 58 years old and I was broke. I've always said to my son, and he's here. So I always said to my son, work hard and I'll send you to any college you want to go to in the country. He worked hard and got into Syracuse University, which is about $80,000 a year. Wow. I could not only not pay his tuition, I didn't know how he was going to put mm. a roof over my head or put food on the table. I was broke. I mean, I had to call my brother and say, can I borrow money? I mean, he vociferated me. He said, are you serious? At 58, you're in this position. And EXP gives every one of us an opportunity to change the dynamics of our life. I can only tell you in two and a half years, I'm in a position where I'm not only going to make, and I'll, I'll, my income is going to jump up by 25,000 as soon as I hit level seven, which I, I'm going to scratch on the door this month. I'll definitely pass it in June. But the reality is that, you know, EXP has put me in a position to take care of myself, my loved ones in a way that I never dreamed possible. Never, ever, ever dream possible. And what I saw is I've always believed that it's as easy to aim high as it is low. That if you really want something, you have to manifest it. You have to have vision. You have to get up and believe it with a positive attitude. And I swore that 
I would never be back in the position I was two years ago in an answer to Anthony's question. And what, what was the significance of 2,800 2, agents, which is my goal, 28,500 agents was a million dollars a year, a million dollars a month, pardon me, in residual and passive income. And I'll show you something. It's, uh, oh, here's my wallet. I carry around. I mean, I live it. I carry around a gold card, right? It's a gold card. And I have it written down each and every day. And I'll read it to you. Um, it says, I awake feeling calm and joyful, building a life with the woman I adore. I am fully accepting and loving of all, me. I am earning over $1 million a month for my EXP organization with over now 30,000 uh, 30, agents and purchasing two properties a month to diversify. So it is really clear to me and as hokey as this sound, I believe that you can't hit a goal if it is not clear about what you want to accomplish. And if you write it down and keep it loose in your wallet, in your pocket and observe it. I look at it every single day. And my son is going doing the exact same thing right now, right? Mm -hmm. You're just programming yourself to be successful. Mm -hmm. Doesn't happen by choice. Mm -hmm. well, it does happen by choice. Yeah, I mean, it's, <laughs> it happens <laughs> by accident. By accident, it happens by choice. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it happens by choice. Well, I know Eric is going to dive into the program, but guys, look, you have two of literally the best agents in the world that have tracked it at a crazy high level right now. I mean, you have guys, let's, let's hear some high level questions. I need some big thinking questions right now with these two, because you've got a limited amount of time and you know what you have here. So, and then I'm going to roll into the program with you. I'm going to show you exactly how to use this. So it's simple. Any other questions? Yes. Um, <clears throat> it sounds like what you're doing uh, when somebody tells you no, uh, which is, you know, a pretty common in our industry and a, a big believer in this, in this strategy and um, look, uh, called the crack the conversion code, you know, and it's all about ob objection handling. Mm -hmm. What it sounds like you're doing is is something called ARP and acknowledge, respond, pivot. So if somebody says no, hey, look, I hear you. You respond, and then you pivot with a question. What have you found to be like the the most and 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 ARPing? What I found is the question isn't necessarily as, as important as just overcoming that first no. Um, is that do you think that's true? And um, what have you found to be the most uh, impactful or most successful pivot questions to get past those, you know, first one or two no's that everybody has, you know, and the, the analogy I always use is, look, when you go into Best Buy and you're going in there to buy something, somebody says, hey, do you need help? What do you tell them? No. Even though you know you're there to buy something, you're not sure where it's at, everybody's natural response is to put their hands up and say, no, thank you. So anyway, what have you found to be the most uh, successful pivot questions to get past those notes. All right, so two things, I wanna answer that in two ways. One is that I think that how good somebody is at isolating, handling and overcoming object objections mm -hmm. in the form of not talking, but asking, mm -hmm. will right. really take up your conversion ratio to a whole new level. When you go into attraction flow, look at my five, you're gonna hear the same five objections over and over again, master that, internalize that, you know it's coming. If somebody was throwing a punch, right. you would block the punch, right? right? You know that somebody's going to come at you with an objection. And an objection is a pathway to a sale. You want to take the time to rehearse, to internalize these objection handling tools. Okay. My couple of pivots are, so if I could introduce you, so if this platform actually aligned with the direction of, that you want to take your business and it better fended for you and your families, for you and your family financially, would you be open-minded? Right. So you pivot right, to the, that, right? pivot right to the, if I can, will you? Absolutely. In any form, That's in any the whole thing. It has to be done in the form of a question. You have right. to get them thinking, right? Think right. about your interpersonal relationships, right? When somebody's talking at you for a long period of time, right? You're talking to your significant other. Do you not want to slightly put your arms around their neck and get, you know, squeeze a little tighter, <laughs> yeah. and a little tighter, and a little tighter <laughs> yeah. right? You want to say to them, damn it, listen to me. Right? If right. you feel that way, that I'm trying to help you with the client, yeah. you want them to feel listened to. Don't never talk at, never. Right. I am like, go through the objection handling and use pivots all the time. If I can, will you? If I could introduce you to this model, you'd mentioned lead flow. If I could give you a model that provided you those all important leads to ensure that you sold more real estate, would you be open minded about making that change? She said to me, 
something about, you know, she's at 95. She was pounding her chest at first about 95, yep. <laughs> right? She's paying over $30,000 right. to her uh, to her broker. So if I can introduce right. your model that allows you to keep more of your hard-earned commissions, would you be open-minded? And use the word right. open-minded. Do you know why I use the word open-minded? I've um, called that on it a couple of times recently, by the way. It's basically, if someone says to me, no, I'm not open-minded, what are they calling themselves ignorant? Exactly. Yeah, I, right. I can't say to them, you're ignorant, right? You know, if you don't right. listen to me, you're ignorant. Okay. <laughs> but I can't <laughs> hear you open-minded. That's polite. Right. Somebody said to me, you put me in a pickle and I don't like what you're doing. So in other words, if I don't say yes to your question, I'm ignorant. I said, well, you know, that's you up to you. <laughs> you said it well, me. <laughs> <laughs> right? But I'm yeah. big to the word open-minded. Me too. Big. The other, the other thing to add to that too, you guys, is that an objection doesn't always mean an objection. No, no different than you going into Best Buy, like you said, and saying- You just don't no. want to be bothered. Well, the best thing, like he says, so the best question asker in the world is Jesus. Literally, all Jesus ever did through the scriptures was ask questions. So become the best question asker. And so Gene's famous thing when he does the napkin presentation, which you guys should have watched a gazillion times by now in your training together, um, is he starts with tell me about yourself, right? And the yeah. second thing Gene always says is tell me more about that. So if somebody says, well, blah, 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 blah. Well, tell me more about that. And just keep, Gene will say it again and again. Well, tell me more about that. Well, what do you mean by that? And by the time you get off with Gene, you've told him everything, but he hasn't told you nothing. Yeah, <laughs> Gene's I'm famous a, for that. Like all my conversations with Nathan, now that you mention it. Well, that's how Gene, <laughs> you know, you walk away from Gene feeling like he's your best friend when you know nothing about him, but he's literally opened you up completely. And he yeah. does it through questions. So, you know, just use questions, not as an interrogation, but as in a way of caring and as in a way of I, your opinion matters to me and I want to understand why you're struggling with this or I, I want to understand what it's going to take to help you overcome this, to help you achieve what you want to achieve. The more I understand you, the more I can help you. Do you understand what I mean? So yeah. when you're asking questions, it, it conveys care, it conveys listening, it conveys concern, it conveys a lot of things when you're asking questions. Yeah. No, the, the no means not right now. It just takes time, guys. She right. touched off on something. And you know, one of the reasons I really embrace the XP is we've got some great leaders in the organization. I don't know Gene that well, and I I met Brent a couple of times, but both of them are incredible human beings. I mean, what incredible leaders. I mean, I'm from an industry, you know, I was in investment banking for three years, you know, with one of the top investment banking firms in the world. They are as talented. They are as kind. They are so in sync of connecting with people. I listened to them and I, I, you know, I said something to Brent a couple of weeks ago. You know, I was at Brent's event in Dallas last year and I got more out of him than I got out of Tony Robbins. When I said that to me, he probably thought I'm full of it. But the reality is that he is so heartful. He is so about connecting with people. He is so genuine about giving that, you know, I try to em emulate. I mm -hmm. think that, you know, they are incredible leaders. There's so much <laughs> clean from both of them. And, you know, I constantly listen to um, videos that they've made and replay that. I mean, they're great examples of how to build your business. Great examples. I mean, they're almost like the perfect leaders for the EXP organization. They are. They're amazing. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Quick question. Have you, or how would you say if, since your son's say he's making the calls and I've ran into this a lot, say if I'm making a call and I'm going to set him up with Charles or somebody to talk to, the first thing they, some people will go on there and go, if I say, you know, talk to him a minute, get him interested in making a call with you, if they would tell your son, no, since you're calling me about that, go ahead and tell me about it right now. I want to know about it right now. And you're not available there to do it. I would be genuine. Jackson would say to them, and we talked about this, you know, I'm relatively new at EXP. I want to make sure that you are getting all of the important and necessary information you need to have by somebody who's had incredible success. And he edifies me. Not only has Eric been hugely successful at EXP, he's a great guy, super informative, and can give you answers to all of these important questions in a manner that I can't. Okay. Really good questions. 
Really good questions. What questions are they not asking that they should be asking? Mm. Oh, really, the system. I mean, how do you work the system? Yeah, that's. A, I had questions about that, but I, you know, reserve those. Fire away. Well. Fire yeah. away. Ask me, and we'll get. We'll dive into it. Okay. Well, um, if uh, if somebody, you know, if if it's like a no, not right now. Obviously, they go into CRM grow. Um, how often do you follow up with the with the no, not route? No, not now. People monthly, uh, five months. Does it all depend on the conversation or? So all of our leads are categorized into hot, warm, and cold. A hot lead is right. somebody that is I anticipate joining the organization within the next three months. A warm lead, like the gal who we just spoke to, I anticipate that I will bring her into the organization from ninety days out to within a year. Exactly. Okay. A cold lead, I don't have any clear indication that they're going to join. Eh, they're interested, but no. Um, nothing concrete they may or may not join right what happens is everybody that is either hot warm or cold gets put on a drip campaign okay drip campaign works the following way we send out an email twice a month right we create the email for the people that are part of attraction flow we create an email some of it is live video where they'll put my face, like there's a scene from The Wolf of Wall Street with Leonardo DiCaprio. They put my head on Leo DiCaprio's body. <laughs> oh, it's funny. And it's basically, Jonah Hill says, you show me a check of $72,000 yeah. and I will quit my job tomorrow. Oh, uh, love that. My face, and I had the envelope across my neck and I hand it there. <laughs> and Jonah, Jonah Hill picks up the phone, goes, hey, so-and-so, everything's good. I quit, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I, or... Valentine's Day, you know, it was me dressed as Cupid. People <laughs> were roaring. They thought this week I was the godfather. <laughs> Let me make you an offer you can't refuse. So I send out two emails a month. Okay. One email is something factual about EXP where I want someone to think, okay, it's another milestone. EXP just quarterly report, just past 80,000 agents. Something, what do we know that you don't know? Something that is factual about the company. The second email that they receive in a drip campaign, they go out the first and the 15th. The second email is something that gets them to smile and invokes a positive reaction. I want them to stay top of mind. I want them to think, wow, that's different. This guy's out of his mind. They're almost looking forward to receiving right. it. And positive, so positive this, week, this week, let me see if I can pull this up really quick. And I had, I mean, people this week, let me show you, this is really funny. Um, I gotta go watch that one. That's hilarious. Serum <laughs> grew. Um, so I had people that I have had no contact with for three to six months. The email was um, boom, 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 boom. Where is the initial email? Okay, so I don't know if you guys could see, it's me and Mar it's the Godfather. Me. It's Marlon Brando's body and me on top of it. And it says, an offer you can't refuse. Hey, Sheila, here's my offer. Join me at EXP and keep more of your commissions. Do more transactions with superior lead flow. Have ownership on the brokerage you're helping to build. Receive a passive income that provides financial security. Receive the highest level of training, support, and technology ever offered in the industry. 81,000 agents and counting could not refuse this offer. EXP has changed their life and will do exactly the same for you. Listen to your godfather and schedule an appointment to speak with me today. You wouldn't like to make me angry. <laughs> There's my calendar link. <laughs> Two people have gone on and requested an appointment with me. Eric, I have a question for you, bud. Yep. Um, so I, clearly you, you're very successful at bringing in people to the top of the funnel and making those calls and bringing people in. But I do have a question about once they're with you. Yeah. Um, you know, one of the things that Anthony and I have been working on pretty extensively is, is what the overall value prop looks like, maybe beyond EXP. Are you leaning exclusively on the EXP value prop? What, what, do you, what are you... As you've grown, because clearly this is something that as a Phaedron group, we deal with that most people don't deal with. We're a monster. Yeah, we're a monster. And what level of support are you actually doing once they come in? Are you making sure they lean exclusively on the EXP value prop or how are you throwing your arms around the people you bring in? It's a great question. So I talk a lot about this with my group. 
<coughs> Somebody in my group doesn't want to be a good sponsor. They shouldn't sponsor. They should focus on EXP. I really bothers me really bothers me when somebody brings somebody into the organization and doesn't take proper care of them. I think that people, you know, this is how people fend for themselves and their families. This is how people support their families. It is our responsibility as a sponsor that when someone comes in, that we cater to them and give them all of the tools and systems necessary so they can have the type of success, whatever they'd like to have. They choose not to use it, that falls upon them. But we don't have what I call two open door policies where we invite somebody in and then there's an open door outside the exit. That is not going to happen in our group. And I'll, I'll get on the phone and chew them out. I mean, the reality is that at EXP, in my group, every Wednesday, I do a 2 p.m. call. 2 p.m. every Wednesday. I'll bring on a vendor that helps those agents sell more real estate because let's face it, most of them are not going to have an organization as big as Sheila and mine. I want to provide them something of value. So every Wednesday, I'll bring on a vendor. I'll go back into my old coaching days and show them what is the perfect listing presentation look like? What is a buyer consultation? Objection handling. I was known in the industry for that. You know, I'll take them on a real estate tool, but every Wednesday I'll provide them value that helps them not just build their organization because they know I'm at the top of the food chain. You know, I don't say this in a way that's politically correct. <laughs> Some people, I'll be in a call sometimes with people and they'll talk about, you know, the group, the group, the group, the group. And we know who's the head of the group. What you're saying is go out there, you know, and line my pockets, right? Burn the ship in real estate, you know, put, make me more successful. I never do that. I always think, how can I be of service? How can I give back? How can I show them a sensitive side of me? So every Wednesday at 2 p.m., I have a group call every Wednesday without failure. <laughs> And then today, every Tuesday from two to four, I call on behalf of anybody who's on that call. Everybody in my group, it's on a Zoom. Everyone can watch me make the phone calls. And I, my goal is to put people underneath the people underneath me, right? Mm -hmm. And I have done that a lot. I mean, this person who I'm talking about, who could be massive, massive in Miami, I'm not putting that person underneath me. That came in from somebody who gave me a name, never was on the second call with me, with that person. I spent now four hours, but I'm gonna put him under, under, underneath her. And when I told him I was doing that, you know what he said to me? That is the coolest thing I've ever heard. He said, the fact that you are so kind of dialed in on how people feel and think within your organization, because you are exactly the type of person I wanna be aligned with, aligned with. So I'm always thinking value-added proposition, always. Well, and, and I and, and certainly uh, understand. I'll just speak real world, right? Let's just talk real world about what we're what we deal with. Um, you know, we've we've had no, um, maybe not at the scale at which and the pace at which you've you've had over the past couple of years of uh, bringing in frontline people. Uh, but we we've had no shortage of uh, frontline joins that that join us. What we've experienced, and this is kind of really where I was speaking to with the value prop, I don't necessarily mean the organization as a whole, because I, I believe and we feel the same way that uh, I think each sponsor should have a level of ownership in that relationship, uh, rather than just instantly say, call Sheila, call Charles, call whatever, I think, but at talking about just your, your level one support. What we've seen is that we've had no issue bringing them in. But like you said, there, there appears to be a back door that that's open. And so when we talk about uh, the value that you provide to your level one, not the organization as a whole, but to your level one. So you've got your weekly call on Wednesdays and the Tuesday, and the Tuesday, and, and Tuesday. And, and is that pretty much the, the, the gist of it? I mean, is that, yeah, but you know, some people that didn't show up. So um, I had just brought somebody on who's a really good agent in Texas, and I have not heard from her for like two weeks. And it was just top of mind. So I sent her a text yesterday. I said, hey there, I was just thinking about you. How was your vacation? She joined and went on a vacation. How are things coming along at EXP? Can I be of any assistance? She wrote back, um, hey, Eric, my vacation was wonderful. I got engaged, so excited. We are already scheduled our wedding and signed the contract for our venue. I have a listing coming up this week, which now I know she's qualified, right? So a lot was to be gleaned from that. I have a listing coming up this week and I'm looking for the next project for my investor. I still have work to do with KB Core website, right? I'm planning my honeymoon, yada, yada, yada. I wrote back, congratulations, Cherry. I'm so happy for you. I can feel the excitement in your words. Please let me know if I can be of help, ready to help you build your rep share organization whenever good for you. So I'm constantly, I try to pick 
probably two, three every day that I'll send a text to or make a quick phone call to just so I touch them. So I stay top of mind. And, you know, I don't have a ton of attrition in my group and I'm constantly, you know, it's about keeping what I have and at the same time, making sure I'm going to hit a number, right? I'm going to hit 75 FLA. I'm never going to go below 50 again, ever. You know, I'm leaving too much money on the table. But my goal is not to have 100 people in my FLA. It's not my goal because I think that creates, sometimes it creates resentment. You know, I want to share the wealth. I want to share the wealth. And that's always top of mind for me. That my organization, I want people to, I want everyone to make money. Sounds good. But you every, have every day, just put it in your calendar every day, just reach out to two or three people in your organization, just touch them. I don't know what you're thinking about them. Anything I can do to be of service. People love that. And, and it comes from here. Do you happen to have a scale or, or a certainty like when you're looking at agents to bring on or to speak with or to contact, are you looking at a scale like um, as far as sales or, or anything where you're like, you know, you see somebody, obviously they've made one sale in two years. You're like, well, they're not real active. Do you still contact them all or talk to them or do you just, or you wait to a certain point and you're like, okay, they're, they're there. Cause I know I've got an agent that I worked with at Caldwell Banker and he was at EXP and then he left over and I spoke with him yesterday and I said, what did you leave for? And because I wanted to hear what he had to say, he didn't really have a good reason. His whole reason was he was a brand new agent, just got licensed. And he just felt like he wasn't real sure of himself without basically without having a security blanket of a physical person right there. I understand that. And, and I understood that. And I said, I, and so we talked a little bit. And by the end of the conversation, he looked at me, he said, you know, everything you said, I, when I feel secure, I will leave and go back to EXP because I liked it better. I just didn't feel secure of, of knowing the job well enough. So he would be a cold lead and he'd be in your drip campaign. You would put him right into serum grow, into attraction flow, and have the system work for him. You'd have a task in place to call him. You know, you'd say to him, how, um, what is your comfortability in terms of me following up with you? I'll always ask you somebody, you know, how would you like me to follow up with you? What's comfortable to you? I'll ask for their guidance. Remember, if somebody says, call me, I'm going to make a move in three months. If there's anybody else recruiting them, they're conveying the same message. So I'll always move up their, that timeline. Always do half of what they say. Half okay. of the timeline, they say. That's a great phone. That's a great phone call you had, though. You know, that person clearly is open minded. So in answer to your question, um, the market is changing. And I made a decision over the last couple of days that um, I probably am not going to bring people into the organization that aren't doing a minimum of eight to 10 transactions. Because what we don't want is I don't, and I don't say this, unless somebody is super motivated, unless I can feel their you know, burning desire to be successful, I don't have the bandwidth right now yep. to, to do that. And you know, if, somebody, if they're, somebody's doing four transactions with the way the market is looking, they may very well be out of the business, let's yep. be honest, within the next you know, 12 months. So I'm very cognizant to my bogey right now is a minimum of 10 transactions a year. Okay. I like that. Well, I'm intrigued to see your uh, the workflow here. Sure, can you pull up. I don't know when I'm recording. It wouldn't let me share. Um, Charles, are you able to share? Well, let's let's see here. A okay, screen. Yeah, well, it'll let me share. Well, I was trying to minimize this to pull up. It'll do it. Just click share. Not the actual, yeah. You want me to pick up the record on this side so you can free up? Hold on, let me try this. I, it wasn't letting me. Yeah, so just hit desktop and then you'll drop it down and bring yours. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Didn't let me do that before. I don't think it's in the workflows in our CRM group yet. Should be. Okay. Did you, did you request? I didn't know what it requests. Access? I don't think so. Yes, Jeff. I went through it and I was like, I didn't see where it was in the mark, my material section. So we'll see. Oh, wait, no, CRM girl. Oh, wrong one. <clears throat> yeah, both of those, Jeff. That's perfect. Keep that one open and then, yeah, exactly. Okay. Exactly. 
All right, let's go in. You know what, actually, let's go to the website first, then we'll come back to Serum Grow. Okay. Perfect. All right, so introduction to attraction flow. What you're gonna see here is the two key calls. That's the first thing I talk about. Those are the two things that you really have to master. And it's just asking seven questions on one and three questions on the other. And then mindset. I think that very often people fail. Their intention is to come to EXP and make money by building out a rev share organization, but they don't have the my, right mindset in place. So I spend um, time, this part one and part two, talking about the, the right mindset. Um, you'll see then there's glossary, and those are all of the terms that we use. You know, how do you identify what is a hot, warm, and cold lead? How to set up attraction flow in CRM. Really, really simple. You're going to go to team and you're going to ask request in CRM row to have access to attraction flow. Um, how do you compile a prospect list? So we had talked a little bit about this before um, using realtor.com. But, you know, when I first started sponsoring agents, if I was going out to lunch with my girlfriend, for example, right, on a Saturday or Sunday, I would stop by a half a dozen open houses and just go in and flash a smile, say hello, make contact. I would make it a point of going to two events a week, a board event, a title event, a lending event, somewhere where there's going to be a, you know, realtors. I put together a list of every realtor who's been on the opposite side of a transaction is a former colleague or realtor friend, right? So you want to start thinking outside the box. Um, setting up an appointment call, how, did, how does that work? And all of this, not only are all of these have videos attached to this, so you could see me making these calls. You'll have the scripts written out for you, but you could see me making calls. Uh, the reminding confirmed text, you know, when do you send out a text? And I'll show you all of this in the system. I'll get into that. Uh, step four is the open-minded call. So what you're going to see here is there's a 10-step process, right? There's a 10-step step process that I'm going to go through in detail in the flow chart and how that breaks down. Step number four is the open-minded call. And these are examples of what that call looks like. Step five is the two video automation. This is all automated. What happens when you have that open-minded call? Somebody says, yes, I'm open-minded. We then send them at an email that has the two attached videos. One video is nine minutes. The other is Brent's 30-minute video explaining the, mo uh, the model explained, right? What happens in the automation is that if they don't open up that email within one hour, the system will automatically send them out a text saying that we're, we know very often emails get sent to spam or junk mail. Just wanted to make sure that these, that you receive the two videos that we had talked about. If they don't watch the videos within 24 hours, they'll get a friendly reminder, right? That's step number five. That's the two video automation. Step six is, you know, when we had had the open-minded call, we had set up a call to receive their feedback. It's called a rating call where we rate them on a scale from one to 10. You heard me do that in this morning's call, right? We send out a remind and confirm text. Again, this is all built into the system for you. Seventh is the rating call, rating them on a scale from one to 10. Eight is what we call a tech tour, which I offered her. She wasn't quite ready to sign the app. So she can either go to a Zoom attraction call with me where I explain the model in 45 minutes or she can go on a tech tour and world tour. Nine is the joint application and 10 is the onboarding checklist. If I can stop you there, this morning he had a call when we were having the dif difficulties getting on the meeting together. He was on, a, on one of these calls before we, we joined. And you actually went from your phone call to having them do the join. Join up. And you guys, it was a brilliant transition he said, you know, why don't we go ahead and do your application? He didn't say, he didn't call it join app. He said, let's go ahead and fill out your application. <laughs> it doesn't notify your broker or switch you, but that gives you, uh, it'll give you access and we'll be able to get you into the system to start do, seeing EXP and the tour and blah, blah, blah. So he literally filled their join out app <laughs> by just saying, let's fill out the application. I was like, oh, I like that. <laughs> I was lucky. I had two good calls and <laughs> Sheila and Anthony were here today. I was, I was fortunate. There were two, there were two really good calls. 
Um, and then you'll see on Attraction Flow weekly Zoom calls. So um, Jeff Setlow, my business partner with Attraction Flow, does a tech tour where he takes people through KB Core, um, Skyslope, and Workplace. I do um, intro EXP Realty uh, with uh, Eric Orland. This is my attraction call. I do an attraction call that you're welcome to attend. It's every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern and every Thursday at 4 p.m. Eastern. And I'm the only one in my group that does the attraction calls. And then I do prospecting, the same thing I do on Tuesday with my own team. Um, I have mo many of my calls set for Thursday afternoon between two and four. So anybody who's a part of Attraction Flow could come on and watch me make calls and get really comfortable. Additional resources is there's a brokerage cost comparison calculator. And that's where you simply plug in the numbers. It's unbelievable. You plug in the numbers. Let me pull this up really quickly. And I want to, I don't want to get too granular because I want to, yeah, how much? Yeah. If you go to start, Sheila. So, right, what this does, you identify how many home sales somebody made, what is their average home price, their average commission, that will show you what their annual gross commission was, right? This is actually somebody who I spoke to last Wednesday. Um, he makes about $60,000. And what it shows when you look at the split, his franchise fee and the other nominal costs, he, by moving his license, took all the EXP costs, 16,000 he's gonna pay EXP, you know, the $85 a month technology fee, the errors and emission that he's gonna pay in every transaction. By moving his license from realty executives to EXP, to EXP he would save himself over $9,000. Now, what's really brilliant about this is what Gene taught me. It's amazing. So Gene, this, this is how smart Gene is. So I showed him this presentation to Gene. Gene said, Eric, how long is this person going to be with the, how, how long is this person going to be selling real estate? The average person says, oh, I'll probably do this another 10 years. May I ask, what would $90,000 mean to you and the family? What would you do with that extra $90,000, right? But this is a brokerage cost comparison calculator. All right, so we have uh, the calculator to look at, um, the attraction flow chart. This is kind of what I've been going over a little bit. I'm gonna open this up for you. And this basically shows you the 10 step process, right? First is compiling a list of realtors, doing what we call the appointment setting call. Again, all scripts and manuals watching me do this. Uh, the text 15 minute prior that goes out automatically the open-minded call. This is an actual phone call um, where I'm asking seven simple questions. Based on how they respond, they'll either be hot, warm, cold, or a no-show. That will lead to one of these actions that go out automatically. After number four, uh, we send out the two video automation email. After that, they'll receive a text prior to the rating call. The rating call will take their temperature again as being hot, warm, and cold, or a no-show, and they'll receive an appropriate course of action. Um, if they're super hot, they'll go directly to a join, Zoom app, and then onboarding checklist. That is the attraction flow. So it's a simple, simple 10-point process. What I want you to really understand is let the system work for you. You just have to get really good at working, making two phone calls, the open-minded call and the ratings call, and that's number four and seven on the chart. Um, all of the scripts, objection handling tools. This is exactly how I isolate, handle, and overcome the five objections over and over again. Um, videos, how I attracted a thousand agents. I did this for a group in Ohio. They had asked me to come on and we taped that. And one was a mastermind call that I did with Tim Harris um, that got some positive feedback. So there's a lot here. There's a, a lot here. Um, but it's so simple to implement. And what I love about this, it's, it's made for the common person at EXP. Any one of us could do this if we're simply willing to pick up the phone and connect with people. Sheila, how do I go to a connection? You can tell I'm not, I'm not super tech savvy. Um, 
Those CRM grow, but I don't think that these have been put, where would they be in my CRM grow? I don't think they got put in so yet go today. To, you know what? Go to materials. And that's where I, I didn't get an then media library, materials library. And I didn't see how no, do we get what that? you have to do is you have to go to Teams. Uh, hey Siri, call Jeff Setlow. Calling Jeff Setlow. Because once this is put in my system, you guys, it'll uh, you guys are under my team, so it automatically goes all of this system goes into your system. But we'll have to have them go through the attraction flow to go through the actual process, right? Okay. So do I just give them my, my login? Okay, Charles, you've got that, right? If you'll get everybody in. I think, I think, shall we just go to Teams? I did Jeff with the XP real Sorry, I missed your call. Hey, Jeff, do me a favor. Give me a ping when you get a chance. Give me a holler. Um, I'm trying to no, get Sheila set up yeah, I went through in attraction it's flow. It, I think you go true. right to Teams and then there's a request button, the Orland group. Mm -mm. Yes. Yeah, join team. You know what, Sheila? Go join team. Um, it is called Attraction Flow. Oh, there we go. Okay, that's what I missed. You're in it. Uh, okay, I requested. Boy, Jeff. No, I requested. No, oh, he, they have to accept me. Yeah, I'm gonna send him a text right now. Okay. So, refresh, um, just to make sure. What I'll do is I'll jump back on a call with you guys and take you through. It's simple. Simple, 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 everything. So how this whole thing came about is that I had had significant success in two years and about six months ago, Jeff Setlow said to me, hey, Eric, really love your process, but you know, I'd love to come out to Miami, got a hotel, hotel room right next to my apartment. He said, would you mind if I spent a week or so with you, kind of just mirroring you and watching how you built your business. And Jeff quickly, really smart guy, quickly said, you know what, love the system, but why don't we automate it? And that was kind of how attraction flow was built. So I'll take you through the automation. Um, you want to set up another call with us? Yeah, we'll set up another time, you guys. What we'll do is Charles will get you the login, my login for the actual system. So and can, can we not replicate down to the team? Because if we got them all in logging into your oh, system. Oh, it needs to go to each of their... Can we replicate that? Because if that's the case, we'll never. You'll be the owner of every lead. We'll never be able to. to Each person they is to under me. They have to be. They have to have their own CRM. They have to have their own CRM. Well, they do. No, but, but they do they under do. me. That we're a team. I yeah. pay for the team platform. Oh, you know what? And they can all access that. Okay, right. Yeah, we need it that way. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We just need to make yeah, they sure. They for their own. Um, uh, so, can yeah. somebody log into CRM Grow right now and tell me do what I just did? Go to. Go to Teams. No. Teams. Yeah, go to Teams. And then over here on the right, go to Join Team. And then type in Attraction Flow and see if it, it gives you the option to do the request. I'm not sure if it'll give you the option or if it has to show up in mine first. Yeah, we can maybe replicate that to our team. Well, it, once it goes into my team, everybody yeah, in sure, my team should, should be able this. to pull it into their system. Yeah. Well, I, um, uh, I mean, I, I, I see the system. I can request it here. Yeah. Can you do the request? Each of you do that, please. Do the request. And then that way it should be able to be downloaded into each of theirs under my team platform. I requested it. Okay, perfect. Yeah, mine's requested as well. And, and then why don't we set up a training? take me maybe half hour max to walk you through. It's so simple and easy to use. And the reason we picked CRM Grow was the simplicity of it. I wanted something, I'm not tech savvy as you could tell, right? <laughs> so I wanted something that was really simple, you know, a plug and play. And it is exactly that. Awesome. Well, before we get, uh, before we reschedule guys, what we're gonna do is make sure that we dive into the attraction flow series that I'll get out. And I want everybody top to bottom through that system before we have this new, the next call scheduled. That way we can all be on the same page, speaking the same language and uh, really make that as efficient as possible for Eric's time. Questions, uh, scripts printed. Yep. All of I'll it. Get, I'll get username and password out to everybody. And, and uh, I know we got things to do and calls to make today, but let's dive into that right away. If you guys have any questions, ping, give me, just give me a call. I'm really accessible. My cell phone number is 
9000. 415-595-9000. And I need a phone number that ends in 9000 or something like that. <laughs> yeah, that's my old California <laughs> number. I, 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 I am never getting rid of it. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds official. <laughs> All right, you guys. Thank you. Appreciate you. Hey, Eric, thank you so much for your time. Oh, that was very good stuff. Time. Great call, by the way. That was solid this morning. I was glad we got to watch that. Excellent. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Thank, thank you so much. Bye, everybody. Have a great rest thank of you. the night. Bye-bye.